Hello there. 48% of US voters question Biden's mental fitness for office. But far more worryingly, 46% think he is mentally fit for office. Well, 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 48% of US voters disagree with the statement that their president, Joe Biden, is mentally fit for office. But as I said, isn't it terrifying that 46% think he is cognitively fit for office? That's according to a poll for Politico.com. And even among those who identify as voting for the Democrats, there was not a strong majority of those who think Biden is mentally fit. And Biden looked a little lost when challenged by Newsmax reporter James Rosen about all of this at one of the president's extremely rare press conferences and even more rare ones where he actually stays and answers questions. Rosen asked the president... Why do you suppose such large segments of the American electorate have come to harbour such profound concerns about your cognitive fitness? To which Biden replied, I have no idea. Which many US voters now seem to think is the totality of what's going on inside the presidential head. Sleepy Joe is now at the one year point in his presidency and has little to show for it although he did proudly say that he had accomplished more in his first year than any other president had. In fact, his Build Back Better plans have hit the rocks due to politicians on his own side refusing to back him, as has his voting reform legislation. And on voting reform, he said that unless his legislation was passed, the 2022 midterm elections this November and the 2024 presidential elections would be rigged and not be legitimate. Presumably because the system that got him elected and that everyone said was rock solid secure suddenly now isn't safe because he's in office. He's also still in a Covid quagmire and the Supreme Court has thrown out his attempts to mandate the wearing of face masks for 84 million US workers. Then there's the ramping inflation and the lingering supply chain issues. And his retreat from Afghanistan was not exactly a triumph either. So he may have achieved a lot, but most looks more negative than positive. So to have his mental fitness for office so openly questioned just one year into his administration cannot be good news for the now embattled president. And it doesn't help that his sidekick, Vice President Kamala Harris, is viewed just as negatively as he is. Nor does it help that he made a bit of a horlix of his press conference, causing the White House staff to have to step in and clean up after him. Talking about any Russian action against the Ukraine, Biden seemed to give the impression that a minor incursion would be viewed differently by the US to a major advance. And added that Putin is likely to move in. He has to do something. Now that's going to cause confusion. What is a minor incursion and what would the US do? With ITV reporting... Cue a collective intake of breath from Washington to Kiev and many places in between. Or more foot-in-mouth disease from the president. So the White House had to come out afterwards and clarify that any move across the border of the Ukraine would be viewed as a new hostile action by Russia and Biden's press secretary Jen Psaki said... If any Russian military forces move across the Ukrainian border, that's a renewed invasion. And it will be met with a swift, severe and united response from the United States and our allies. I wonder if they've learned from Afghanistan and actually informed their allies this time. Or is this the first that London, for example, has heard of it?
And I ask that because we got bounced last time in Afghanistan because we didn't know about US intentions and we had to play it by ear throughout. And judging by Joe Biden's statement and Jen Psaki's rush to clarify, it indicates that we might be going down a similar path where the Ukraine is concerned. And also consider that we have recently been told that we sent some anti-tank missiles to the Ukraine with soldiers to help train their troops on how to use them, but that our people would be coming straight back once that training was completed. So when the White House says a Russian invasion of the Ukraine of any sort will be met with a swift, severe and united response from the United States and our allies, what exactly does that mean? Now, Saki also said that cyber attacks and the use of paramilitary tactics by Russia would also be met with a decisive, reciprocal and united response. But from what I've seen so far, I'm not sure that Downing Street or anywhere else like Brussels has any idea as to what he means by this or whether Biden expects UK or EU assistance, for example. Or is this swift, severe and united response a figment of Joe's imagination? And the press don't ask? Now, I do hope that Joe Biden is not signing war checks on our behalf, checks that he expects the UK to honour with blood and treasure without having the first clue about what his intentions are. I sincerely hope not, because this nation has not been prepared for any such eventuality. The people of the UK have not been primed for conflict. Reading about it in the press and being ready to engage are two completely different things. And you don't pack armies off to battle without first getting the people full on behind the campaign. Anyway, closer to home, maybe Boris has got his political breathing space. But before I get onto that, I just want to say a massive thank you to all my super thanks, Patreon and PayPal supporters, as well as those that do buy a mug with my mug on it. Links in the descriptions box below. You really do help me keep this channel going. So it looks like the plot to oust Boris has so far misfired. But will there be unintended consequences? Many pundits had yesterday down as the day that Boris would fall. But that did not happen. He wobbled a bit, but far from toppling him, yesterday's events seem to have given him a bit of a rebound, even though it may be temporary. We were led to believe that the letters of no confidence in Boris landing in Sir Graham Brady's inbox would surpass the 54 required and that the vote would soon be announced. But only silence has followed. Bar some reports that half a dozen or so letters previously submitted to the chairman of the Tory backbench 1922 committee had subsequently been withdrawn. And Sir Graham is quoted as saying that unless the letters piling up in his office prevent him opening his office door, then there would not be a leadership challenge any time soon which I take to mean that unless near half the Tory MPs submit letters, that's about 180, then it's unlikely that Boris would lose any subsequent vote of no confidence. But he has lost one MP, Christian Wakeford, who crossed the floor yesterday minutes before PMQs so as to cause Boris maximum embarrassment. And there is now talk that five more could follow him. Presumably these are more than likely to be new Red Wall Tory MPs, who are maybe worried about their futures and are taking the plunge early so as to get themselves accepted within their new party. Something that might take some time given Momentum's anti-Wakeford outburst yesterday. Although, given what the now ex-Tory MP said about Labour and its policies up until the 11th hour prior to crossing the floor, then momentum might have a point. But Wakeford and the, and the five unnamed MPs are probably the most likely candidates for submitting no-confidence letters anyway. So their leaving might reduce the threat to Boris, 
given that Wakeford's exit seems to have settled the Tory ship for the moment. With traditional Tory MPs maybe thinking, better now than in the lead-up to the next general election, when any such damage from people like that would be magnified. But there will be one interested onlooker, Jeremy Corbyn because if there is a small exodus of red wall Tory MPs into the Labour Party ranks, the far left in Labour might get really fractious and Corbyn might be handed the route to starting his own hard left party on a platter. As Labour Party momentum types might see Keir Starmer's leadership ending up by turning Labour into the new Tories. So a split could occur although it would probably be more of a Corbynista splinter group offshoot. But overall, I think Boris has managed to stave off his opponents for a few days. Well, at least until the Partygate report is published, and that will dictate the severity of Boris's backbench backlash. So what's your opinion on Joe Biden's fitness for office? Please like and comment below. Please subscribe and like this video, buy a mug and support me on Patreon or PayPal and thank you for watching.